Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of the greatest video games ever made. I am currently on my sixth playthrough, and when I bought this game several years ago, there wasn't a tutorial online anywhere to how to start this game. What should you do first to build your character, and, and how should you best approach the beginning of this game? That still doesn't exist today on my sixth playthrough, so I'm going to go ahead and make that video. Thank you for joining the channel, and this is how you should start Red Dead Redemption in 2024. This is a PS5 version of Red Dead Redemption 2, and this is some tips and tricks to get you started. First and foremost, this game operates on an honor system, so if you do bad things like kill people, rob, and steal their gold, then you will lose honor and you will become a worse person. If you do good things in the world, you will be rewarded by the citizens around you. You will get special deals at, uh, at gun stores and general stores and things like that. But if you want, it's all about you, boo. Go ahead, blow the head off of some miners and steal their gold. No worries. However, there will be retribution. You won't get certain things, and people will fear you. If you would like to take the opposite path and go the lighter side, you can help citizens in need. If you're traveling down the road and you see someone bitten by a snake that needs the venom sucked out of their leg or an antidote, you can help them out. And what will end up happening is that person, when he sees you in town, will go, Hey, 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 uh, thank you for saving my life. Why don't you head into the general store and go ahead and pick out something? To which you can buy sometimes a gun, a um, hundred dollars, two hundred dollars suit. You can buy things that really makes it worth it to suck on a guy's leg like this. Let's keep this between us. Now the first thing that I would advise you to do whenever you're starting your game is go to your settings menu. In your settings menu you can change your run option. Go over to controls and you can change run from toggle to run or hold to run. And holding to run you have to keep pressing the button in. With toggle to run you press X once and Arthur runs. When you press it again, he stops running. So all you gotta do is scroll down to the bottom. There are several other options. Take a look at them. Maybe they'll be something that you would be interested in changing for your own gameplay as well. But I would advise Toggle to run. Now the next thing that I would advise you to do is head over to your footlocker at the camp and add some clothes to your horse. You need three different types of clothing in this game. You need clothing that is suitable for hot temperatures, like we have here with the gunslinger. You need clothing that is suitable for cold temperatures, like the winter gunslinger. And the grizzly outlaw is suitable for average temperatures and just hit the corresponding button to add or remove those outfits from your horse. Then when you are traveling on horseback and you enter cold weather where snow's on the ground, you don't have to turn around and go back. You can just change your outfit right there and continue hunting the bear or moose or whatever you're up in the mountains for. Now I'm going to pause this list right here because the best advice that I can actually give you playing this game new in 2024 is to play the main story missions only. Don't worry about the side missions, don't worry about the side stories, only play the missions that are bright yellow on your map. Get through this main story. This is the greatest story ever told in a video game, and inevitably you will find a spoiler online as you're looking up something like a rock carving in the open world. You will ruin this story. Play the 50 hour campaign, it's a wonderful story and you'll have a great time and your second playthrough you will have a much greater appreciation for all the details. You will undoubtedly get immersed in this world and want to play it two or three times anyway. Play the main story through. It's the best advice that I can give you. Now, now that that's out of the way, let's get back to our list. Now, early in Chapter 2, you will have access to one of the best horses in the game. It is the White Arabian. And in order to get the White Arabian, all you have to do is head up near Lake Elizabeth to this area right here. You will use your dead eye, which you will learn about in the game, and you can find the tracks and track this horse down. Uh, then you can break the horse and tame the horse and make the horse your own. Um, you do have to complete Go Hunting with Hosea mission in order to unlock this horse and get it to spawn. But once you do so, just head up to this northwest region and you can find one of the best horses for free in the game. 
Bonding with your horse is very essential in the game. There are four bonding levels, and each bonding level unlocks different attributes for your horse. Um, your horse is your best friend. It is your means of conveyance. It is your best friend. It's everything that you have in this game. Um, you can only keep four horses in the stable, so pre-plan out what horses you want. If you want the White Arabian, if you want the Missouri Fox Trotter, all these different horses kind of pre-plan. Uh, there are different attributes to each horse. Some of them are more equipped and suited for war and won't get scared by snakes and alligators. And like the White Arabian is very fast and but gets spooked a little bit easily now bonding with your horse you can feed your horse you can brush your horse you can pat your horse as you're riding by holding down l3 but the absolute best way to bond your with your horse is to grab it by the stirrups and walk your horse you can see on the right hand corner of the screen the bonding level just keeps going up and up and up and up if you walk your horse this tedious little task here if you walk your horse for 20 minutes 30 minutes you will get your horse all the way bonded up to level four and it's so much better for you and the horse so whatever you do pat your horse feed your horse walk your horse bond with your horse Speaking of horses, the next thing on our list, I would not advise you to buy any guns at the gunsmith. Uh, I would advise you to buy upgrade your holster and your gun belt. Um, other than that, don't buy any of the guns. You're going to find them in the open world, and the guns kind of progress as you progress. You'll get the guns that you need when you need them. Do upgrade your holster and gun belt, and do upgrade your saddle and your stirrups. Your stirrups will reduce and improve a lot of different aspects. Upgrade your stirrups and your saddle to the best that you can by going to into town and going to the horse stable. Now when hunting for your camp, uh, you can hold three animals on horseback. You can hold a larger animal like a deer on the back of the horse and two smaller animals on each side of the horse. All you have to do is walk up to the horse and stow it on the horse in the appropriate spot. You can see we have a turkey on the right hand side and a skunk on the left. When you get back to camp, just hitch your horse. You don't have to remove these animals physically. Walk over to Pearson's tent and you can donate these animals for provisions to be made into stew for the camp members. Pearson also has an option for crafting upgrades. You can donate perfect skins and pelts to the camp so that he can upgrade different tents. He can upgrade your tent, Hosea's tent. Uh, these little upgrades make the camp look a little bit nicer and it gives you more tasks to do. Uh, I don't believe that these are required during a hunter 100%. Um, however, the main thing that I want to talk about is satchels. You can see here we've got tonic satchels, ingredients, kit, provisions, materials, and valuables. All of these satchels widely expand the amount that you can hold of these items. And the main goal here is to get the Legends of the East satchel. The Legends of the East satchel can hold 99 of almost every single item in this game. So you will find yourself in a situation where you can only hold three cigars. So when you find a cigar, you got to smoke a cigar to make room to pick up the next cigar. With these Legends of the East Satchel, you don't have to find room. You have 99 of almost everything. Uh, that is the first thing that I would do, especially if you're looking for a long playthrough. Go hunting, hunt down perfect pelts, and get this Legends of the East Satchel. After you finish the mission, Money, Lending, and Other Sins, you will unlock the Ledger. The Ledger allows you to upgrade your camp. I would advise you to do this as quickly as possible as well. Upgrading your camp will allow you to obtain fast travel from your camp. You can go to a map on the back side of your tent and you can immediately travel to anywhere that you've been before on the map. Fast travel is a wonderful asset to have in this game and it's something that you should do as early as possible. It does take quite a bit of money to get all the upgrades for your camp uh, in order to gain the fast travel map and first thing that you have to do Guess what? You gotta upgrade Dutch's tent first, then you can upgrade yours. It does take a lot of money, however, we will get to that in a later episode, how to get a lot of money with very little effort. When it comes to hunting for these perfect pelts to get the Legends of the East satchel, you need the appropriate weapons. You can't go down and shoot ten times to get a perfect pelt. 
One thing that will help you immensely to get a perfect pelt is to obtain the legendary buck antler trinket. The legendary buck can be shot and killed and when you do that you will get the legendary buck antler. You can take that antler to a fence and have it upgraded to a, the buck antler trinket. This buck antler trinket will greatly increase the odds that your pelts will be perfect pelts. So if you do miss shoot a little bit, or maybe it's not the best pelt in the world, if you have this trinket, it helps immensely and maybe it gets you towards that path of the Legends of the East satchel a little bit quicker. Now while you are out hunting in the world, you will sometimes remove the pelt first from the animal and then move the animal. You can see there is blood all over Arthur's left shoulder. If you go to camp or go to town with the blood all over your shoulder like this, people will comment and people will say things. You have a couple options. You can either go into town and take a bath, you can run through the river and wash yourself off, or you can just change your clothes. You can change into the exact same outfit on your horse and all of that blood will go away. It's like he has two or three or five different pairs of the same outfit on the horse. So don't worry about paying 25 cents for a bath. Just hop on the horse, change your clothes. No one will bother you. While you're out in the open world, you can find Valerian Root, Pirate Rum, and Ginseng Elixir. They improve the cores of your dead eye, stamina, and health, respectively. Uh, you will max out on these items at some point when your cores are full and won't be able to consume anymore, but don't worry about it. The last thing I have to say is do your chores at camp. Do those tedious little things like moving the chicken feed and hauling the water. It really helps your character, Arthur, improve his cores, and it helps your rapport with your camp members. Now, please, have a blast playing this game. It's absolutely, hands down, one of my favorites. It's a beautiful game, and I thank Rockstar every day for making this masterpiece.